this is uh, the first time we met uh, by online by Zoom meeting, Mr. Rana. And on behalf of uh, our department, I would like to thank you to you. We hope this morning uh, you will uh, deliver a, a presentation about the uh, corrosion uh, as uh, one of the option for the undergraduate to uh, to have their, their, their career after uh, their study in the university. And I would like also to thank you to the committee and to the also uh, to the participants. And we will have uh, around forty-five minutes of the presentation, and then uh, perhaps uh, there is a question and answer around fifteen minutes. Uh, so it's more or less one hour. Uh, of this event and don't forget to maybe uh, half an hour before the before the end of this uh, zoom meeting uh, the committee will deliver uh, uh, the google form for the uh, for the uh, uh, certificate of the of, of this event so, Mr. Rana? Yes, please. Uh, so, how are you? Are you okay? Alhamdulillah, I am okay. How about yourself? I'm okay. I'm, 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 I'm okay. And then, uh, so, you have the uh, slide? Yes, I do have. Can mm -hmm. you see them? Uh, not yet. Not yet. Yes, are they on my screen now? Uh, so, please, the... Someone, uh, uh, but before we start this uh, presentation, I would like to uh, <clears throat> uh, to read the short curriculum vitae of uh, Dr. Mahbub Tela Hirana. So his uh, full name is Mahbub Ella Hirana, Dr. Mahbub Ella Hirana. Uh, his religion is uh, Islam uh, and married. And now uh, she live, he live in uh, Guzranwala, Pakistan, if I'm not wrong. Uh, he got uh, a Bachelor of Science and Master of Science from uh, Punjab University in Pakistan. And then uh, he got the Diploma of Merit uh, at the International School Enrico Matei for uh, Petrochemical and Gas Studies, I guess, in Milan, Italy. And in 1975, he got a, a PhD degree uh, uh, at the Victoria University of Manchester, uh, UMIS at the uh, United Kingdom on the corrosion science and corrosion uh, engineering. He has already uh, many uh, uh, experience and training. If I read from his uh, CV, he has uh, he worked, uh, for example, uh, until 2016 at uh, Petronas in Malaysia. Uh, before he spent uh, maybe uh, several years, maybe uh, maybe around uh, ten years, I think. Yeah. It's around uh, uh, more or less, uh, yeah. 10 years in uh, Libya, 
in the oil company and also at the uh, at the university uh, bright star university of technology uh, in libya in uh, asdabia libya so i think mr mabubrana has already uh, spent his life uh, between the academic life and also the industrial life and now he stay in uh, pakistan and his present job is a self self employee corrosion consultant so at the flyer you can see the uh, website address of uh, his uh, 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 company corrosion uh, Corrosion uh, Consultant.com, if I'm not wrong. So please check uh, his website and, and also his uh, YouTube if you have interest in the corrosion. So that's the short CV of Mr. Mahbub Prana. Uh, the time is yours, Mr. Rana. Uh, please. Hello. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Can you hear me? Yes, we we hear you, but we don't have your presentation yet. No, it is already on my screen. I can see it. Uh, yeah, but we we can't see your uh, PowerPoint. Uh huh. Then you have to share it from your side. Uh. Mr. Fajri, can you help uh, Mr. Rana to share his uh, PowerPoint? It is on PowerPoint. It's on my screen now. I can see it. Yeah, yeah, but uh, uh, I cannot see on uh, on my screen. Then, how can we share it? Yes, yes, you can. Uh, I have shared it. Yes, uh, I can see your uh, face, but not your PowerPoint. Sorry. You can see my face I... only. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not my PowerPoint. No, not yet. Uh, how to share it then? Uh, maybe you can, uh, from the Zoom meeting uh, screen, you can click the share screen share screen and then you can see or uh, you can choose the file of your presentation uh -huh. and click uh, share at the uh, at the right bottom side of Just a moment let me see if i can uh, yes it says uh, right uh, close window pin to Dashboard, mm -hmm. with Zoom, and these are the only options I have in there. Mm -hmm. Let me just uh, Zoom meeting is. Uh, at the bottom of the uh, Zoom meeting screen, you see the uh, in the middle uh, there is a share screen. Share screen. So uh, able uh, to get onto this one. Mm -hmm. Let me restart this Zoom again. Right? What? Sorry? Let me restart the Zoom again. 
Okay, okay. Because I'm unable to get onto it. Mm -hmm. So I may have to restart it. This okay. is exit. Uh, oh, this is not okay. What is this? Exit. Any my oh, this is the one okay. Now which one you want me to click share screen? Yes. I do it. All right. Okay, now you can see it. Uh yes. Okay, I can start it now. Yes, of course, please. That's great. Uh, let me minimize this one. Okay. <clears throat> Bismillah Rahman Rahim. Assalamu alaikum to everybody. Good morning to everybody in Indonesia. Right? Hello. This seminar is being uh, it was prepared and being presented on the invitation of uh, the Department of Metallurgy of uh, Uni Antirta, I believe, a university. I know that this Indonesian language, I'm not yeah. familiar uh -huh. so much with the Indonesian language. Sorry for that. Uh -huh. Right. The next slide shows actually my face in there, which is the latest one. What they put on the actual, uh, my CV was the old uh, picture. Now I have grown a beard and I look much different. Anyhow, the, I will start the seminar with its uh, title first. It is a corrosion as a carrier for undergraduate students. This screen has my name in there, my present profession in there, and my contact number, YouTube numbers, and my email. If anybody is interested, he can always call me on, my, on these numbers or he can just send the email to get any information on the corrosion from A to Z. The, I also have my web page in there. And on the YouTube, I have uploaded many videos which are of your interest and give you ideas actually what corrosion is. This slide shows my qualification experience, although it has been introduced uh, very nicely right, uh, by the host. Uh, but I just want to right, uh, repeat it that I have uh, a PhD in corrosion science and corrosion engineering. Uh, this degree was taken in 1975 from UMIST. It is now a University of Manchester. It was used to be a part of University of Manchester, the UK. Now it has been amalgamated with the University of Manchester. I have experience of 50 plus years, both oh. research, academic, industrial, and consultancy, not only in corrosion, but also in metal finishing and electrochemical uh, applications. This slide shows the uh, introduction of this corrosion. As a matter of fact, corrosion is everywhere, like air. As living being thrive with oxygen, so does corrosion. Corrosion is a multidisciplinary subject or science or engineering, as you may say it, and has its root in metallurgy. Materials among the materials in metallic, non-metallic, engineering, non-engineering. In scientific side, it has its links with chemistry, electrochemistry, microbiology, and physics and other branches of the sciences are also there. From the engineering side, it's very close to chemical, mechanical, electrical, civil, and computer applications because the world has changed and now everything is being used on the computer. And obviously, all the software which are prepared in the subject of this corrosion engineering, they has to be accessed through the computer. As a matter of fact, corrosion experienced by all materials and all sectors from domestic to advanced industries, I think you come across with so many of the corrosion issues in your kitchen. You see in there, anything 
which is metallic, sooner or later it develops corrosion. Historically, corrosion has been a focus of study for scientists and engineers, and of course researchers for 150 plus years. And you will see that it is still progressing and it's not yet fully understood. As the focus of study is further enlarging, the impact of corrosion and its understanding is enlarging too. Corrosion has not yet been completely controlled by the engineers, scientists, or the, any other technologist. This slide shows the impacts of corrosion, right, uh, which we actually experience uh, almost at every time, at any time, and all over the day, right? And it is affecting uh, our life as well as uh, the life of the industry, among them energy and fuel infrastructures, uh, health and safety. You may be surprised at how come it uh, corrosion can affect our health and safety. Well, safety and health also be actually affected by the accidents or the catastrophic <coughs> effect of the corrosion damages. Another thing which is very important, maybe it's not well known to all the engineers, that's the human implants particularly the hip giants and the knee giants and other parts of the human body are being made from the materials. And all those materials which are important in there, one way or the other, they undergo some type of corrosion, right, sooner or later. National security and uh, readiness means that all the aircrafts and other defense systems, right, mobile and non-mobile defense systems, they all being affected by the corrosion one way or the other. If the environment is also being affected by the corrosion because of the catastrophic devastation effects of the corrosion. Once an explosion occurs in the industry, and recently so many have happened, right, all over the world. I don't want to name the actual countries. But so many accidents have recently happened in the refineries and in the other type of the petrochemical plants. And of course, sometimes the aircraft industry is also affected because of corrosion and the accidents and the catastrophic accidents of the aircraft while they're flying, right, can also result from the impact of the corrosion. Then the critical infrastructure, engineer devices system like your computers, like your electronic systems, like automobiles, like all your industries, wherever you use the metals one way or the others, all of them, they have been impacted or affected by the corrosion, right? Economic security and productivity, it has a great effect on the production if a catastrophic accident happens in there. With the shutdown, you have to stop the production. And if a catastrophic happening in there, it can also damage much of the equipment and there can be long, long shutdowns. Last but not least, electric transport and artifacts, right? Like your ships, like your buses, like other type of transports, land transports, marine transports, air transports, all of them are equally affected, right? by the impact of corrosion. This slide shows the global cost of the corrosion that it is uh, sampled and published by the NACE 2016. In year 2016, NACE is a National Association of Corrosion Engineers. It's a, almost a global, uh, right, uh, educational and corrosion uh, society, right? And uh, at present, uh, situation has changed uh, unless you are a member of the NACE and you are having a certificate from the NACE, you may not be able to find a good job in the industry, at least at a lower level, technician level or a practical application engineering level. 
the global cost of corrosion it is <coughs> at present is <coughs> 3.4% global gross domestic product which you normally call GDP where roughly it is equivalent to 2.5 trillions but the variation now says that this cost varies between 2.5 trillions to 4 trillions so you can imagine right it may be more than the national budget of many of the countries in the world Global saving means that if we apply the present know-how of corrosion control, the corrosion engineers may be able to save almost 15 to 35 percent of this global damages and this global cost, which roughly equates to 375, 375 billion US dollars. You can see the volume of the damage and the volume of the saving. Right, we are not even able to reach a 50% saving level of the Korean damages occurring all over the world. The cost of Korean is on the rise, as I said, it is varies between 2.5 to 4 trillion dollars. As industry units and disaster impacts of Korean, so is the demand of the Korean engineers and Korean aware. Now the industry is realizing that without having a corrosion engineer with their setup, they are not able to survive right economically, efficiently, and diligently. So the corrosion engineers have their vision in the future at present and was not that much popular in the past. But be sure in the future, the current engineers are going to be a very central position in the industry, not only at application type or in the day-to-day -day running, but on the desktop during the design stage, because all these engineers, designer, mechanical, they have to consult the current engineers, right, before they can proceed with their design. What is corrosion? You see, there are uh, so many definitions of corrosion in the literature. I have listed almost about 90 plus definitions in my YouTube videos. All of them, they have a disparity. Of course, common item in there is the materials and the environment. But how the corrosion impact the system and its consequences are varying from one setup to the other. So does this definition. I have just given you here four definitions. I may not read them all, but just to make you understand that corrosion is the deterioration of a material. Act is not only deterioration, it's a devastation as well. Usually a metal. It's not usually a metal, rather all metals, non-metals, right? And composites. All of them, they are affected by the corrosion one way or the other to less or more extent. But the devastation effects, right, are more of concern than a normal deterioration effect. The other definition which is given by the Department of Defense uh, in assessment of corrosion education in the year 2009. They said degradation, loss of function of all materials by the exposure to the environment. You see that the common item in there are the materials and the environment. The rest are all periphery, and that is how it keeps on moving. The other definition, which is also given by the Ah, yes, so International Standard Organization. It's also expanded a little bit more as a physiochemical interaction between a metal and its environment, which results in changes in the properties of the metal and which may often lead to impairment of the function of the metal, the environment, or the technical system of which these form a part of. 
This is given in the ISO 8044, 1986. Remember it, if you see the definition, right, it is not actually giving you the vision how much impact this corrosion may have on the stability, integrity, and the workforce in the industry. Now, the last definition which is given in here is by International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry. They were included in there the ceramics, polymers, like non-metallics as a part of their materials. The rest is almost the same as what other definitions. If you need to know more about these definitions, you can visit my YouTube site. It is free to visit. There is no restriction on it. Just click it. You will get all the videos in there. And you will see that in future, more videos will be added in to my YouTube channel. <clears throat> now, but you know, we know corrosion. But when we say the corrosion science and we say corrosion technology, we say corrosion engineering, right? Not many people understand it. What is corrosion science? What is corrosion engineering? What is corrosion technology? For the corrosion, why should not be put two together as one word as a corrosion? No. The corrosion science is defined as the study of the interaction of material with this environment. What happens to it? They're not concerned about it. How to control it in the, in the field? Corrosion science doesn't deal with that. For that, we have to move on to the next definition of what is corrosion engineering. This definition is given in here as taken from the Fontana and Andy Green in 1975, right? But there are so many definitions of corrosion engineering. If you visit my YouTube site, you will find there are quite a few number of definitions given in corrosion engineering by different sources. Corrosion engineering is the application of science and art to prevent or control corrosion damages economically and safely. Among these things, obviously, control and prevention is a part. But the most important part of it is the economic and safety. If your corrosion control measures is not safe to safeguard the industry and it's not economical to use it, then obviously your corrosion control strategy or your corrosion control approach will not be acceptable to the industry and not to even the owners of the industry. So make sure when you apply any corrosion control measure in the, to the industry, right, it should have an economic parameter in there and a safety parameter is the most important part of your control and prevention measures. This definitely taken from the corrosion PDF. Just to show you that it's not corrosion engineering has only one definition. It doesn't have only one source. It has so many sources. And this corrosion definition of the engine, corrosion engineering is the corrosion engineering combines the knowledge of several fields, including chemical engineering, mechanical engineering, material science, metallurgy, electronic engineering. As a matter of fact, we have to add that as computer engineering, right, <clears throat> to enhance the actual role of the corrosion engineering in the industry. And it's closely related to material science and metallurgy and deals with the corrosion of engineering materials as well as construction, materials, including ceramics, concrete, plastics, and other non metals This definition of the corrosion engineering is taken from the Wikipedia. Just to make you understand that corrosion engineering, like the corrosion, has been defined in many different ways. It concises it to the corrosion engineering is understanding, specialty that <coughs> corrosion engineering is an engineering specialty that applies scientific, technical, engineering skills, and knowledge of natural laws and physical resources to design and implement materials, 
structures, devices, systems, and procedures to manage corrosion. It does not take into account the most important factor in there, which is the economic and the safety. Now, what's growing technology? We have talked about the Korean science, we have talked about the corrosion, we have talked about growing genes. So what is growing technology? The growing technology references in there. Growing technology, the study of combining chemistry, electricity, physics, metallurgy, other sciences, prevent and control corrosion damages. Its definition, again, does not include the economic aspects and the safety aspects of the corrosion technology. Although, if you go for it, the economic parameters and safety elements are always there as a part of the curriculum. What the corrosion technologist, as defined by the European Federation of Corrosion, corrosion right? technologist who must collaborate directly with the corrosion scientists and engineers should also have a good understanding of the scientific principles and be capable of applying these to practical problems. <coughs> Again, we does not talk about the economics and the safety parameters. Now let's see, when we talk about the metals, right? Where can you find metals? If you see the periodic table, you must have seen it in your even, uh, right, uh, the secondary school education, right? This area all in there, the red one, it shows the metals which are located in the periodic table. All of these metals, they undergo corrosion. Some people, they have the notion that gold does not corrode. No, it does. And there is a corrosive environment, right, which can cause corrosion of the gold. Gold does corrode. Only difference is that gold is much stable in natural environment as it is found in the nature in the form of gold lumps, not the ore, but gold lumps, right? Or maybe gold pieces. So you can go to the mines, you can pick up the gold pieces, stuff in your pocket and run away. Apart from the gold, no other metals which are found in the nature <coughs> in the form of the, of the, of the metal or the element. Rest of all the metals, they are found in the nature in the form of oxides, what we call them old or surface carburetes, right? All of them they come in there as a part of their existence. But gold is the one which is found in nature in its elemental state as gold. Minerals and materials uh, which are found so far. But this uh, reference is taken from the minerals and materials survey. USA Geological Service 2020. 90 minerals and materials are exploited across the global earth crust for the benefit of human being and to set up the industrial units. So you can imagine, the Korean engineer has to imagine, right? How many, how many actually metals and environments they have to deal with when they become a Korean engineer. So it's not a unilateral science. It's a multilateral science and engineering where the Korean engineer has to focus much of his energy to understand not only the corrosion itself, but the basics of all the engineering whatsoever in order to give a proper decision to their control and prevention of the corrosion. Before that, they understand that what causes corrosion, how to actually minimize the corrosion, how to protect it. All these basics the corrosion engineer has to understand okay. right, right in the beginning. Know, Materials. What is the metal? 
Metal is the element that tends to lose electrons from its outer shell in the in the atom. Now there are more than ninety metals in the periodic table as they are listed in there. If you count them, they will come out to be ninety plus or ninety four something like that. And uh, not all the metals have so far been exploited, right, for the industry use. And then when you combine these metals, right, and you produce the alloys. Not all the metals in their neat form are being used as for the industrial applications, right? Or for a normal application, they have to be allied with the other metals to change their properties, which are more acceptable from the industrial point of view, right? And from the safety point of view. So, Korean engineer must keep in mind, it is not only 94 metals. There could be numerous alloys which are made from these metals. The Korean engineer has to come across with them. So the Korean engineer doesn't have a small mind, not a narrow path. It has to have a big mind, a big brain, and a wide path to get into this field and to understand this field and then apply its talents and its knowledge to control it. Then there are cladded material. Cladded material means when you have a one metal on top of the other, right? Depending on which side you are interested in. So two metals are cladded together, not made alive, not mixed together, like the alloys. They're just cladded together, right? To prevent the corrosion of the stronger metal, right? Which could be the actual substrate. And the corrosion of the matter which is facing the corrosive environment. This application of cladium material has become very common and is going to become more common in the future. Then the non metals as I said, polymers are there, right? Ceramics are there, carbon is there, right? All of these materials, they are being used one way or the other in the industrial application to avoid corrosion impacts, but still, all these are well, still vulnerable uh, to the corrosion impacts one way or the other. It all depends, uh, right, how long that takes. Then the composite materials, uh, no which are coming between the, one is a metal, other is a non-metal. They are being put together, right, as a liners and to control the corrosion or the impact of the environment uh, on the stronger metal, which is normally outer structure. Like a pipeline, you can put a non-metal or a polythene or other PDF materials in there, right, to control the corrosion or the corrosive effect of the fluid and the fluid environment in there. Then the aggregates are there, which are also being used as a mixed metals and mixed non-metals together, right, like using a cemented pipes or using a cement, laying a cement, right, on the on the internal side of the of the carbon steel pipes or the mild steel pipes to prevent the corrosion from the seawater. So all these materials that corrosion engineer has to come across in his practical life. Environments, has this picture taken from a corrosion volume one by Shirayra El It's a very old diagram actually. It enlists the environment so far encountered, right? It's taken uh, from a book which was actually published long back, right? And it's repeated or repeated in 2001 to this book is republished and this reference is still there. But the environments, you can see how many are there, right? And these environments will keep on increasing as they must have increased as the, the level of pollution is rising in our nature. Like in the sea, like in the air, right? Like everywhere in this world, in this globe, pollution has become a very serious situation, right? And this is going to change the earth. They have changed, right? The entire environment of the, of the globe. And that environment is going to cause a different impact of corrosion on the materials and the non-materials so the growing engineer has to expand his vision, right, 
to understand that how each environment is going to have its effect on the corrosion. These smaller boxes at the bottom left and right, it shows the actual parameters which can have influence on the corrosion. Right among them is the actual agitation is there, temperature is there, right? Then this is the velocity is there, then the stress levels are there, gravitation is there. All these things, right, they have a separate impact on the life of the materials and the integrity of the materials. They're all grouped together as corrosion in there. So the men of corrosion or the engineers has to have a big memory as well, right? To keep the things that there and he must have a very good access to the available information and data, right? Online or offline in the libraries, in the books. And as to my understanding that, right? The future is in the online education as well as on the, the data available, mainly on the, on the computers and on the digital forms. I have seen so many other libraries had a difficulty even how to dispose of. All those, right, hard papers, which are actually money, right? They could not find a place that they dumped that, right? Those paper money are the paper books into the dump. So please, see the, how the future is going to change, we need to have a look at it as well. Varieties of corrosion and corrosion damages. 57 varieties of corrosion are identified or registered by 1970 in NACE's book, which is called Basic Corrosion. And over the last 50 years, right, I believe, these varieties have changed a lot. I regret to say that I tried my level best to find out a statement which can give me a sort of reference that how many more varieties of corrosion have been added to the NACE list. Types of corrosion keep on growing as more materials and environments are developed and encountered. Recently, 2011 API 571 has identified the 66 growing damages only in the fixed equipment in the refinery. Although there are so many other equipments which are not fixed, like rotating equipment, like turbines, like compressors. So those damages are not included in this API 571, API is the American Petroleum Institute. This data is taken from their, uh, right, this uh, reference in 2011. As I said about the chronic damages, right, and the chronic varieties, chronic damages keep on growing as more materials and environments uh, are added. Properties which are more related uh, of interest to the crewing engineers as well as to the industry are the physical properties of all the metals, non-metals, mechanical properties, chemical properties, electrochemical properties, thermal properties, electrical properties. These are put in there to make the engineer, crew engineer understand that it's not only the materials or the environment or the laws. No. He has to come across with all these properties in his right, academic as well as in the profession life, and he needs to know how these materials are going to behave, right? Physically, mechanically, chemically, electrochemically, thermally, and electrically, before he can give his opinion, right, on the part of a material selection. Definitely, the rest of the calculation may have to be done by the actual uh, design engineers or the mechanical engineers, but the crew engineer job is to give a feed in, right? which is more appropriate from the Korean point of view. So he can only do that once he understands all the properties which are affecting the actual, right, the integrity of the materials of and on the industry. What of the industry means when you have the equipment lying outside in the environment, 
it undergoes coroinase. But no matter how much effort you have taken to prevent the ingress of the natural environment or the moisture in there, no. We have seen it, even complete in sealed equipments, they have also been affected by some or other by the corrosion. The workable properties are the materials. It's not only the mechanical properties or the strength of the materials, no. It, when you select a material, you need to know that can the material be cost or not. If it cannot be cost, no use of use of the material, right? Because you need to do the costing, then you had to do the, the, the rolling, you have to make a sheet, then you had to do the other thing, right? Then you have to see the malleability. Can this material right to be changed into a proper sheet or a plate before you make a selection? The ductility also a part of that. That can the material be ductile? Means it can be made smaller than from the ingots of the of the alloy or from the material, right? Or from the cost cost item, can it be made thinner and thinner and thinner without having any negative impact in there or having any development of any cracks or any other right? This uh, disadvantage of having a right a, a material which is not ductile. The machinability means can the material be machined? If the material cannot be machined, then how can you use it? So need to make sure that the material itself is machinable, right? It can be machined into different parts. The weldability, if you want to make a vessel, you have to weld it. You have to take a sheet from there, you have to weld it. If you want to make a storage tank, right? You have to take the plates and you have to weld them. Suppose that the material is not valuable, then definitely you can't make a storage tank from the sheet, from the sheet of it. So you have to make sure that the material is valuable. So be a corrosion engineer, you have to see all these properties in there, right, which are workable, and before you make any recommendation for the application of any materials in any of the environment, the soldability other issue, which is the very important issue for the radio sphere as well, as well as for the computer parts, right? And brazing and flux comes in there. That's a different issue altogether. I have not put all the properties in there, but as a matter of fact, when you get into the profession, then you had to see the actual, all the properties in there, which are a part of the material and application, because these properties may vary from application to application. Right, so the being a Korean engineer, you have to be very vigilant, right, and knowledgeable before you make a recommendation, right, for any material to be selected for a certain application. Now, so far we talked about Korean, right? Now let's see that some people, well, this is called the ugly faces of Korean. I just give you two examples in here, right? The Korean under the insulation. There are so many corrosion issues are there in the world, right? If all the put in there can become a, become a full atlas, multi pages, hundred pages atlas, and those are available at present, right, at different forms. On your right is a picture taken by me, myself, right? The corrosion of the copper tube in desalination plant. So you can see that corrosion, the copper tube is undergoing corrosion. In you know, desalination plants, you can see the actual uh, the deposits in there, and then you can a clean face of the metal in there. So the growing is everywhere, right? Second ugly face of the growing is in the concrete. Those two cases which are given above are from the industry. These two cases are given from the from the industry as well as from the local life. This is actually a concrete corrosion. You can see that how the corrosion has occurred under the concrete and it has completely spelled off the concrete, stagnated the concrete. And sooner or later, this building is going to collapse. And so many of these examples are available in the world. When I was in Libya back in, uh, right, uh, from 1975, we visited a place where we could see the office located on the coast, which was having uh, pillars made of the carbon steel, right, reinforced steel as well as for the, uh, covered by the very thick layer of, of the concrete, right, it was so badly corroded in there that I could count the numbers of balls in there just hanging and twisted. Okay. 
So this is only very simple example. The next on the on right is the microbiological induced corrosion. So we always say that microbes cannot do much to the non-matter, which are not non-living. They have no life. As a matter of fact, these microbes and bacteria they equally affect the matters, right? Although they are right non-living. Just for the reason, living beings and these non-living beings, they have a common source. All of them have come from the earth, and eventually they all will go back to earth. That could be the best definition of the corrosion, which is called a biblical definition that whatever has come from the earth, that goes back to the earth. How long it takes and how it goes back, there are different ways. The medical doctor, they see it different ways. Crewing engineers see it in a different way. Anyhow, the crewing engineer has to understand that it's not only the, right, the, the environment, which is very clean, but also bacteria in there, which we normally call as the microbacteria, they also affect the integrity and the corrosion of the carbon steel and many other matters, not only carbon steel, many other matters. But so far we have seen corrosion as a very bad, right? And we believe that corrosion is bad. No, it's not. These are pretty faces of corrosion. The picture on the left is beautiful one, which is electrochemically polished. Electrochemically polished means it is the my micro level corrosion of the surface which can bring a smooth surface. Polishing means that there are no valleys and there are no highs. It is a very smooth surface with equal reflection. That is called the best polished surface and then also be taken or can also be done by using a micro level corrosion in there, right? Which I called it as a beautiful, pretty faces of corrosion. One other, right, is actually thermal sputtering corrosion. It is actually an artificial diamond. Diamonds are, not, are natural, right? And of course, diamond has no value unless it is polished. Polished diamonds are never found in the nature, right? And as you polish it more and more, this value increases. But now they have come up with a special technique where they can make artificial diamond by thermal and sputtering corrosion. Means you have two electrodes made from the metal, then you take a spark in there and they will produce a different type of rays from there and the particles, particles from there. Then you can collect those particles in a beautiful way and you can make the structure as you want, which is called active vapor diffusion, or you can call it as a thermal and sputtering corrosion. All these things are given in my videos. On the YouTube. This other beauty faces of the corrosion are the electrochemical corrosion like anodizing. Anodizing mainly done on aluminum and other rice and other metals, right? Means you make a very thin oxide layer on the surface of the material, which is normally done on the anode, where we always call the corrosion takes place at the anode. So the anode has to corrode first before it can develop. Now, oxide layer on it, right? And that can be used as a protective material. It can protect the aluminum alloys, magnesium alloys, and other alloys, right? And then you can make very beautiful pictures and very beautiful utensils, and very beautiful items after anodizing the material, right? And you can import different colors in there. They look so beautiful. And some of them you may be using in your home, which in terms of the type of the glosses or the plates, which are called anodized aluminum. The, on the right is actually the <coughs> chemical and electrochemical corrosion and deposition. You can polish the gold chemically, means that you have to corrode to a micro micro level, right, to polish the gold. Or you can have electrochemical deposition, you can deposit the gold load it on the anode and deposit it on the cathode, so you can have an artificial gold formed in there. So these are two of the pretty faces of the corrosion. Corrosion is not that bad, as we always have understood. Or is not that as bad as looks as a part of the rust on the carbon steel. 
career opportunities in industry. They say mainly for the engineers, they can they have their career open. Like in the oil and gas industry, chemical and petrochemical industry, through diagnostic and research laboratories, construction industry, nuclear industry, transportation and aviation industry, on and off short transport industry, which is marine industry like ships, submarines, right, with type of <coughs> boats in there, power and steam generating industry. So the Korean engineer has so many options to go for. And as I said, Korean is being realized as a very, very, right, the focal issue of the integrity of the industry. You now, the industry has to think twice and maybe three times before they decide not to have a coronal engineer as a part of their sector. This again, carry opportunities in business like electrochemical polishing, chemical polishing, metal finishing, chemical, it's in the business I'm talking about. Coronal engineer can his own business if he wishes, right? It's not that he has to be tied up to industry, right? To show off his talent or spite his talent, no. He can have his own business. He can have his own setup, like as a electrochemical polishing, chemical polishing, metal finishing, chemical and electrochemical plating, decorative finishing, vapor deposition, chemical, electrochemical, mechanical engraving, cathodic protection technology, cathodic protection surveys, chromium monitoring surveys, right? Or you can have this on your own. It doesn't, some of them don't require so much finance in the beginning, right? You need a very small setup in a very small place, even a tab tabletop. In the tabletop business, you can start with a very, very profitable. And that is shown in this uh, slide. Bioassays is also a part of the industry. You can have a separate uh, right, <coughs> service to give to the industry in uh, the analysis of the bacteria and the bacteria is growing in there. Mothballing is the protection of the equipment and the industrial equipment uh, during layoffs. Short layoffs or long layoffs, where you can become a part of it, providing them the right environment and right chemicals and right advice, right, to safeguard their equipment during layoff. That's also a part of a business. And many, many, many of the industries in the West or in the other places, they are doing it. The stake run surveys, which is also a part of a corrosion, you can always provide a service to the industry. They can, you can do their straight current survey to find out whether their pipelines, right, countryside pipelines, or city pipelines, or city structure are being affected by the current coming from the transmission line, which are AC transmission, which are almost everywhere, right? You can have your own setup to provide this survey, and then you do the analysis and give your expert opinion. Then painting technology, you can also have the painting technology, mean you can have a painting setup in there because so far, it is the illiterate who are doing the actual painting, right? But if an engineer comes in there, he knows exactly, right? How to paint, when to paint, what to paint, and he can also have a labor with him who can do the labor job. But you can have his own shelter, right? Going for a painting technology. Because you have to select the right paint for the right place. If you select the wrong paint for the right place, it's not going to work. If you select the right, right paint for the wrong place, it's not going to work. So you need to have complete understanding of the painting technology as well as right, the painting selections. And then you can go for it. Even you can go for the holiday detections. Right? You can have your own simple setup. It needs only one simple instrument right, to find out the integrity of the paints. You can have your own business going to provide them a service. It's very laborious, but it's a paying off. You can just have a holiday detector and you can just go along the pipeline and you can detect how many pores are in there, how where the actual protective coatings are likely to get a corrosion. And then you can recommend a solid right, uh, <coughs> protection measure, how to prevent a future deterioration of the protective coating. It's a very good business. Then you can even say manufacture your printer circuit board. Circuit boards are being used everywhere. In all your electronic devices whatsoever, wherever is the path of the current, you need to have a circuit board. Right, apart from the transmission lines. Or for your television, your radios, your right instruments, your calibers, all precise 
instruments, meaning the actual thermal properties or the electrical properties or the controlling the, the actual complete function of the industry depends on the circuit board. With you be you, know, you understand the basics of the electrochemistry, you can go for it. You can make your own printed circuit board. You can have your own business. It doesn't require much money. It doesn't require much equipment. It doesn't require much space. It just says it's just a tabletop, right? It all depends how you are going to plan it. Now the property is business, which is also a tabletop. That is because those X-ray sheets they are made from silver bromides, and when they are used, right, ninety-nine percent silver is left on the sheet. You can always recover those silver from the X-ray sheets and make use of it for your living. It is a very good business, very cheap one and very big one. Same is true with the gold. <clears throat> because in the electronic systems, right, where they need a high electrical conductivity, those are and, and a protection from the atmospheric corrosion. All those circuits, uh, they are being covered by the thin layer of gold. <clears throat> Even in the compressors, right? Some gold lectures are being used at the at the at the wedge of the of the actual what we call them as the blade and the main shaft, right where the actual compressor, right? This uh, uh, the, the, the compressor complete setup moves in there, right? Those are also being flucked with the gold, and you can also remove gold from there. The gold is there always the farmer gold. You can always take it out from there in the farmer gold. Then the conversion coatings. Conversion coatings are a very good business. So you can provide a protective coatings right to the items to prevent their atmospheric corrosion and also prevent the non-atmospheric corrosion. Right? Conversion coatings are being to can have to can form a fine layer of oxides or the phosphates or the chromates on the surface of the carbon steels or the instruments or the tools, right? And you can provide the service to the local industry or to the main industry, and you can make good living from it. Electrophoresis is a technique which is coming up very nicely, right? Where you can, apart from that, doing the DNA analysis or analysis biological applications, right? You can simply use it for electroplating. Electroplating means electroplating of the non metals on the metals to prevent their corrosion and preserve the shine. The technology is coming up now that it, you can use the actual finished part. And then you can provide them a further protection by using electrophoresis, or you can provide them protection using vapor deposition. It depends upon right what type of business you like to do. It's also a very, very good business. Then <clears throat> carry opportunities, inspection and testing. Now you can have special courses on ultrasonic testing, magnetic particles, dye penetration, thermography, radiography, and the current was the material identification of its signature. They're all independent business. None of them require, it requires labor. So if you take the special courses in these inspection and testing techniques, you can have your own business at a very, very low investment with a very, very high returns. So any one of them you can choose, right, as being a career engineer, right, and you can go for it and you can have a good money from it. Well, this is called a career workforce. This slide is taken from the actual John R. Scully, 16th International Korean Conference in 2009. It shows you that the career education methods is on the right, and then the career force pyramid, where the, you have the experts, you have the specialists, you have the awareness of them, the knowledge of the is defined in there in the pyramid. It's a very good one for you people to understand it, right? That how the actual corrosion can be integrated into one man or into one team. It all depends how strong and how efficient is the man and how strong and how efficient the team may become. 
right? And these courses are taken from universities, from the colleges, from community colleges, right? From everywhere, from trainers, from <coughs> right, from training centers. <coughs> Short time, part time courses. So next slide uh, shows you the organization, governing standards, codes, and practices and corrosion. So these are the Institute of Corrosion. National Association of Korean Engineers, European Federation of Korean, Swedish Korean Institute, of Microsite for Testing and Materials, American Petroleum Institute, of Microsite and Ethiopia. All they have their own course and practices to make you understand, right, what corrosion is and how to control it. So they have given you some guidance in there, which you can always use to expand your knowledge. These are not available actually in the books. You have to go to these standards, right? And either on the online or offline, now become a member of the library so you can always borrow the book from there online. Borrow these standards from there online and you can write, read them and you can apply them in your practical life. The, again, second is also organistic warning, warning standards, codes and practices on corrosion. It is the ISO International Standard Organization. It is a German Institute. Then British standards are there. European standards are there. Indian standards are there. Maybe Indonesian standards as well. But there are a lot of standards available in the world, which can always help you to tailor your uh, professional careers. This also spans further, uh, <coughs> like uh, American Gas Association, Microsoft, Mechanical Engineers, Materials Technology Institute, Society of Protective Countings, Steel Tanks, and Institute Standardization Agency, all these. Now, the most important thing for you are the centers for the learning career. I have given you some of them, but then maybe, maybe many more, right? Because I have taken my course from Union Manchester, UK. In that time, only two places I gave a course in Korean, one was the Swedish. Technical University of Stockholm and otherwise the UMS University of Manchester. Now there are many other universities in England, even like University of Leeds, sorry, right? You know, Stockholm, Sweden, University of Petronas, Malaysia, right? Maybe there is a university in, in Indonesia giving the course. I'm not sure about it. Then the MIT is there, University of Oklahoma is there, Norwegian University is there, Charles Darwin University of Australia is there. This again continues the same, <clears throat> right? Now, there are only very few universities so far are giving a, a bachelor degree in Corona. I have come across with just two universities. One is the University of Akron, a part of Ohio. They are giving a BSc Corona engineering. It's a three or four years course. You have to go to their website and see that, right? What is the actual length of or duration of the common semesters are there? The University of Queensland and uh, Australia, they are given these courses as a specialized course, <clears throat> or maybe as a lactic course, or maybe as a major course. Same is true by the other universities, right? But among this one, uh, the University of Manchester is giving a, a master degree in corrosion, the University of Sweden gave a master degree in corrosion, and the University of Petronas has given a master degree in corrosion, Ma Massachusetts has given a master degree in corrosion, University of Oklahoma has given a master degree in corrosion, there are other universities are giving master degree in corrosion, but University of Akron is giving a bachelor degree of science in corrosion, other one which is giving a associate degree in Korean technology, that is the Kilgore College US. All the other, they are giving you the courses, either as a major course, or as a minor course, or as an elective course, or as a core course. It all depends which university to go, and there may be many more, right? So you have to work for it, and you have to go to, go to the internet and find out, right, to the website, which university give you what other course, that you may need. Centers are learning. They are getting counting. You know, these are the centers which are giving part-time courses. They are giving online, offline, on-site, right? So these are the actual the names. Cranfield University, Norwegian University, University of Manchester, University of Leeds, University of Oklahoma, and other is there as they're listed there. You can just go through them because the time is passing on. Same is true with these. Uh, Short time and part time courses, uh, right, are given be, be by the institutes, uh, right, in the Engineering Korean Association University, USA. So, there are all the specialized courses they are giving, not only in corrosion, but in the branches of the corrosion also, 
right? And the part of NDT as well. So it all depends what you need and where you want to go. Just spend some time and find out in there, right? <clears throat> at which university, at which place, or which center. They're giving you the training courses. And I'm pretty sure there must be a couple of centers in the Indonesia as well, which are giving you the training in there, right? And if you just have a, a diploma course in Korea, if it's given in there, just go for the specialized courses, establish yourself. Remember that not all the universities are giving the courses, uh, we're giving the courses on special light subjects, like ultrasonic, like NDT, no. You have to have these courses after you finish it, your degree, right? Maybe locally or outside, or if you are clever enough, you can search the website and can adopt, right? A site which can give you the course free of charge. Yeah. Same it too with these one, like Metro, Switzerland, ASM, APA, Society of Aut Automotive Engineers, mm -hmm. Society of Association of Material Protection, all they're giving you these courses. Yeah. And between the, well, this may be the last slide I have in there, right? So business oriented courses for Korean engineers are ultrasonic testing, dye penetration, magnetic particle, positive material identification, yeah. thermography. These are independent courses, right? You can always take the specialized courses and you can become a very effective, efficient and highly special engineer to make a good living for yourself. I just a last slide I have. Thanks for listening to me patiently, right? I am glad that I have completed this uh, seminar for you people, and I believe that you will learn something from there, right? Remember, whenever you go to industry, that corrosion is not a very simple final subject. It's a very huge and demanding, energy demanding and knowledge demanding subject. Thank you so much. Very nice of you listening to me. Yes, back to you. Thank you, Mr. Rana. Yes, you are welcome. Mm -hmm. So any questions? Uh, yes, please for the participants. You can ask directly to Mr. Rana if you have any question. So, uh, Ms. Rana, uh, yes, please. maybe uh, uh, I have uh, maybe two questions for you. You are welcome. Mm -hmm. So, maybe uh, from your uh, PowerPoint, yeah. uh, you said that uh, there is a... Uh, so, for the corrosion is not the is not always the is not always uh, an ugly face, but That's also true. the uh, yeah, like for example, a uh, 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 nice uh, face. Yes, true. Uh -huh. So, uh, can you uh, explain more? Can you elaborate uh, this this kind of? Sure, uh, uh, sure. You see uh, that. We mm -hmm. all have understood that uh, the corrosion is a loss of material mm -hmm. or loss of integrity, right? Which is a bad phase. Mm -hmm. Are you electroplating, your electro polishing, chemical polishing? Its base is corrosion. Mm -hmm. Yes, because you want to chemical polish it. Any of the object is to have to corrode first. Because they, the what is what is your surface preparation, surface uh, finish. Surface finish means it has a very smooth surface which has uh, equal reflection. Uh -huh. There are no valleys, right? And there are no tops. Okay. So this corrosion, specialized chemicals are used as special techniques used to dissolve the tops only. As you know that, the mm -hmm. charge concentrates on tips. Right? Mm -hmm. Yes. At the narrow part of the mountain not on the, on the wider part of the mountain. Mm -hmm. So just consider these uneven surface of the mountain, right? Okay. So when a charge concentrates on the tip of the surface on the mountain, it's going to dissolve the mountain only. Tip of the mountain, not the mountain. So you will have a very smooth surface after having a polishing in there. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. I had not given you a clear lecture. The other example, there are so many of them. You can produce multiple colors on the same object by applying a different coloring techniques. Like what I given in today as a vapor deposition, right? Mm-hmm. You corrode the two metals first, electro- electrically, in a vacuum. Then you sputter those uh, particles, right, onto the object, which will make the object shine. Now you can produce the object altogether. Have you ever used uh, right electron microscope or scanning microscope? Yes. Yes, of course. Yeah. You, of course. Have you ever sputtered the object with the carbon particle, a gold particle, a gold rhenium particle in a vacuum unit? Yes, yes. Yeah. But that's a part of your right, pretty face of the corrosion. Mm. Because you are laying a very thin surface layer on the surface of the object to see it under the microscope or under, under the scanning microscope or under the electronic microscope. Right? Identically, if you can place that thin layer of the objects or the plastics, yeah. this is what's happening at present. Mm-hmm. You can you can provide a thin layer of plus, of the of the of the of the chromium or the nickel or the copper on the surface of plastic, both chemically, electrochemically. Now mm-hmm. they are do, being done by paper deposition. Mm-hmm. And then you can have plastic which looks ugly, right? Once you place your deposits of vapors or other metals on it, in, on it, you can see your face in there. And that is called the pretty face of the corrosion. Yes, have you answered your question? Yeah, yeah. So uh, <laughs> so I hope with, with the question, uh, uh, the participants will uh, be aware that uh, the form of the corrosion is not uh, it's not uh, the form that we always see uh, around uh, uh, our environment. That is uh, true. Uh, it's, it's not only the ugly face, but That's I hope, right. uh, the participant, especially the students or the alumni, uh, know and uh, have interest to develop any kind of technologies that using uh corrosion phenomena uh, for that a, is true it, it's a, Even the, yeah. It's a, a, yeah it's a redox uh reaction it's a electrochemical reduction oxidation to uh to uh, modify the surface of any kind of surface uh, as you mentioned before that's right <laughs> even and, the even yeah. the chemical polish of the gold, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. You can do it in the chemicals. Mm-hmm. And the gold becomes shiny more than the mechanical. Uh-huh. And then you can apply a lacquer mm-hmm. on it, mm-hmm. either by lactophoresis or by spray. Or by, by heating spray, mm-hmm. you can preserve the gold shining forever. Otherwise, Gold shining are the gold ornaments that are going to lose their shine with time. Okay. So, so uh, these are the positive applications of the and I have that in my video videos on the YouTube, which I call them as the positive applications of corrosion. I have listed the many applications in there which I have experienced, and I have some of them I have done myself, right? And some of them I have taken on literature, but they are given in there. Yes, yes. Uh, I also applied the uh, redox uh, reaction to yeah. initiate the polymer grafting onto the that uh, is right solid substrate. Yeah, polymer grafting. You can do electrochemical etching. You can do chemical etching. You can do mechanical etching, and mm-hmm. you can write because all these circuit boards they are made right, by mm. electrochemically, then they are again, by electrochemical etching the, 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 un, the unused surface, not, not the surface are removed, right, mm. by the, either by the chemical etching, by the electrochemical etching, by the mechanical etching, right? Yes. Yeah, which we call, normally called actually the mechanical etching is at the erosion top, erosion part in there, erosion is also very bad, uh, but, uh, ugly face of the corrosion, but mm. erosion in there becomes a pretty face of the corrosion. Mm. 
So and uh, the second uh, and uh, the second question is uh, uh, me and uh, some uh, uh, lecturer in yeah. our department yeah uh, have been trying to establish a, a next student chapter in our department. Yeah. Huh? Uh, so we have already one uh, one uh, lecturer as the uh, what we say uh, supervisor, I think, or uh, uh, yeah, one of uh, one of the lecturer as the supervisor, and more or less ten students uh, are the member of the next uh, student chapter. Uh, can you uh, can you uh, maybe uh, tell about the importance of the student chap next student chapter of uh, the importance of the next student chapter uh, mm -hmm. for uh, undergraduate student to develop or to prepare their uh, their career in the corrosion uh, industry? Yes, it's very important as a matter of fact. Now, if you see the industry at present, all over the world, right? At mm -hmm. least at the lower level or maybe at entry level or maybe at the technician level, they prefer to have a NACE certified corrosion engineer or NACE certified inspection engineer. Mm -hmm. Right, mm -hmm. or a NACE certified capability protection engineer, a NACE certified this painting technologist. So, from the industrial point of view, I think NACE has almost monopolized its wings to everywhere over the well, I won't say on the other world, but at least the Western world, right? Mm -hmm. Or in the African world or the Indian Ocean, may not have entered into the Russian side yet because this day all have uh, particularly the gulf they prefer to have a NACE certified engineer i used to be a sustaining member when i was young okay. right mm -hmm. i was a NACE member for a long time and uh, then the, our interest was to learn not to actually earn on the basis of NACE so we mm -hmm. are just using their information through the to the magazine line material performance and corrosion science, mm -hmm. right, which are coming to our library, both the universe and the industry, right? But I have spent almost uh, 30, so I spent almost 30, 35 years in the oil and gas industry mm -hmm. at all levels, not only sitting in the lab but sitting in the office though. Mm -hmm. I've been to the field myself, we, I, I've been to the boilers inside, into the vessels inside, into the desert as well, right? Doing the things with my own hands. I never actually allowed the young engineers to be on the ground. I was always there with them to make sure that they don't make any unsafe movement. Right? So, what I have noticed in the past couple of years, right, if you see the adverts coming in the, coming all over, they always prefer to have a, a certified authority protection engineers, a certified paint technologist, a certified at this one, uh, the uh, what you call them as survey engineers. So the next chapter has become very, very important, right? And mm -hmm. in my opinion, if you can uh, expand it more, right, mm -hmm. in your place, as inviting the specialist coming in there to give the courses on site, and then let the students take up the course and uh, get a pass grade so they can be certified and they can go for a different job in the industry. Industry now prefer to have NACE certified corrosion engineers. Okay. Have I answered your question? Yes, thank you. Yes, thank you. And uh, maybe this is the last question. Uh, you are actually, welcome. Actually, uh, uh, the question is uh, referred to the, to the situation in Indonesia. Yes. Uh, so, because you're, you, uh, 
you never work in Indonesia, so I think it's it's uh, it's, it's not a uh, is it not is it not uh, suitable for you to answer the question? But uh, maybe based on your experience in the in the industry in Libya in Malaysia, uh, what is the step? What is uh, what are the steps? uh if someone uh, the corrosion engineer or the industry uh want to uh, propose uh, a new uh, standard for the corrosion testing for example there is a, a new case without any standard without any international corrosion standard uh, have you uh, experience have you uh, experience with 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 that uh, and what is the procedure to uh, propose the new uh, testing uh, standard? You see that uh, it all depends on what are your requirement, right? Mm -hmm. Now standards, uh, there are so many standards available in the world at present. I, I think the Indonesians uh, right, do have a standard in there. At mm -hmm. least we have a bureau of standards in there. Yes. Right? I'm not sure if they have a Korean standards on corrosion or not. NACE has so many standards on corrosion. It's not only a single standard which is going to answer your question. Right? You have to develop a complete set of standards in your own country, right? Yes. Following the actual standards <clears throat> done by the NACE or by the other international standard organization. You can always have the standards in there, and then you can translate them into your own language with okay. the permission of the actual owner. Okay. Now, if you want to have an independent standard, then you have to identify the issue first. Otherwise, you'll be, you may be right, uh, repeating those standards uh, right, which are already available in the world. So a lot of literature is available in the world. Only thing is that you have to find an access to it. Okay. And I have given you so many organizations name in there, right? Mm -hmm. Which are actually having their standards. And when you go to industry, mm -hmm. industry always prefer you to use these standards for their own standards or standards, international standards. So I'm not sure that how many standards do you have in Indonesia in corrosion, but I know that you have a bureau of standards in, right, in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So probably you have to check with them that do they have any standard of corrosion? If not, then you make a recommendation that they should either borrow or hire or get the online service of those standards and make them public. Mm -hmm. Means that if they have the access to a standard, they have to pay less fee for it. Yeah, okay. Right? Then they make it make it open to the public through different channels. So any student who is tested corrosion learning as stuff for corrosion, he can access to those standards and he can pay a nominal fees for that when he uses it. Okay. So there are so many options are there. Mm -hmm. Right? So many universities are doing it. That you become their member, pay nominal fees per year, and you can have access to the library, and you can have many standards from there. And if you want to use the, right, your national standards in national language, then definitely start with the international standard, change them into your own language, and then obviously you can build up your own standard libraries. But standards are must. But remember one thing. Mm -hmm. Standards are a lead, right? It's mm -hmm. not end. Okay. Standard gives you the guide. It gives you the advice. Uh -huh. But if you read any standard, they take no responsibility, right? For the consequences. Okay. Right? Uh -huh. Now, that, that is where the actual expert and Specialists come in there where the standard finishes, uh, the Korean expert and Korean specialist starts from there. And to make sure that that standard is going to give the required advice, 
and required guide right to the situation mm-hmm. and sometimes in industry you have to move on to there right mm-hmm. taking the lead from the standards and developing your own mm-hmm. procedure mm-hmm. to fix up the issue i can give you the one example of that <clears throat> we were in the desert and we were actually <clears throat> winding a pipeline it was a 46 inch pipeline main transmission gas transmission line after when we were welding it right somehow or other the pipeline got magnetic so you can't weld it now if you look for the standards and go back to a library come back in the when while you the desert right mm-hmm. you can have no access to it even telephone service is not there but you have no access to the actual satellites in there now what to do there and you have limited time in a very very short time you have to use your knowledge how to overcome this issue this is what we did mm-hmm. in a half an hour we solved the problem although we did not demagnetize the line we demagnetized it only to the extent where it should start accepting weld so that's how you have to need right an expert in there in such a situation so standards are not the end it's the beginning yes mm-hmm. have i answered your question yes of course so right. uh so uh, one of the participant and also most of the participants as your uh uh availability to share your powerpoint to the participants Do no you... problem at all i am going to put it on on the youtube as well aha uh-huh, aha uh-huh, uh-huh. yes so please uh, share your uh, presentation to my email if you don't mind no no problem at all i can do it aha uh-huh, okay <coughs> so uh, mr rana i think we have uh, run out the time because all right already half past uh, uh 12 so it's half past 10 in here aha uh-huh, uh-huh, so yeah. it was difference yes we hours. are we are two hours slow yes uh, so uh, again uh, i w- i would like to thank you for your participation today to give a uh, uh, I think it's a uh, knowledge or your experience your opinion about the corrosion and I hope it will uh, help uh, our student here to uh, to have interest in corrosion and maybe they will uh, try to get any uh, any kind of certificate in the corrosion uh, 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 in the corrosion field before or after the they have job uh, uh, after uh, finish their study in my opinion the first step in this is you have to make your industry realize that the Korean engineer is the core of the engineering core mm-hmm. right yes was i have i think i am not sure what it few maybe a few weeks back a few months back you had a problem of one of the refinery in there mm-hmm. in indonesia right mm-hmm. and so you have to visit the industry to make them realize that please take preventing measures before you had to work catastrophic right damage and collateral damages in mm-hmm. the industry and to the environment mm-hmm. so i think you have to move around you have to make have more seminars in there have more actual uh, events in there to make the people realize corrosion is a very very right like, uh, uh, important part of the engineering yes so that's why uh, mr rana uh, we have a course in the corrosion and protection yeah. in our uh, curriculum very nice uh, uh, just a few months ago uh, uh, i support the the the, the establishment of the uh, 
next student chapter in our department. That's wonderful indeed. Uh, and uh, uh, some of the people, the, 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 the expert and also the uh, academics, uh, maybe start in a few weeks ago, every week we have a meeting because uh, maybe in 2023, uh, the Corsium, Corrosion Symposium, maybe you know about it. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe uh, Corsium, the uh, Corrosion Symposium 2023 will be held in Indonesia. Wonderful indeed. Mm -hmm. so, Wonderful indeed. So thank you very much, Mr. Rana. You are welcome at your service, sir, yes. right? And uh, if you need, if anybody needs any technical advice on mm -hmm. corrosion, right, okay. you can always contact me. Mm -hmm. I can advise them, right, uh, correctly with references mm -hmm. and with my own experience. Okay. So, uh, Thank you so much for listening to me. You're welcome. You're welcome. So and give my swam and uh, right <clears throat> uh, regards to the participants in there and mainly to the actual your department. Uh, Mm -hmm. Right, uh, 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 colleagues. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Allah Hafiz. Mm -hmm. Bye bye. Bye bye. Assalamualaikum. All right. That's great. Can I switch off? Yes, of course. Thank you so much. Very nice of you. Yes. So, have a nice time. Nice. Uh -huh. Stay in touch. Uh -huh. Of course. Of course. Yeah, bye so, bye. Uh, uh, we have a uh, completed the this uh, seminar yeah. and please for the participant uh, fill the google form for your presentation and then uh, the community the committee will send the is the the certificate to your email yeah. and i will also send the certificate to Ms. Rana and i hope uh, Ms. Rana will send back the uh, powerpoint uh, to, to me and I will share the PowerPoint to the uh, participants. No problem. Mm -hmm. You are welcome. I will do it mm -hmm. right away. If you want it, I finish after seminar. Mm -hmm. I can just uh, actually PowerPoint uh, a folder to you. No problem. So, I, I, got your, I got your email. Mm -hmm. I will just send it to under, under your email. Okay. Thank you. So for Mr. Rana and for all of us, I hope uh, we are in a, in a in a in a good health. We stay safe. Don't forget with uh, uh, safety and uh, uh, be safe because uh, we still have this uh, pandemic. And to Ms. Rana, uh, thank you, and we will keep in touch in the future. Inshallah. Inshallah. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. bye, -bye. Assalamualaikum. Right. Uh, jadi Bapak Ibu terima kasih atas kehadirannya dan